Ambassador, we're uh, delighted to welcome all of you uh, to the White House and most especially uh, to the United States. I uh, have been reading about your trip, I've been reading about some of your views of our country, and I'm uh, very glad that you have a chance to uh, travel through the United States, to talk to the people who live here, to make some judgment of our institutions, where we've been and where we're going. Rather than make a speech to you this morning, I'd be glad to answer any questions you might have for a couple of minutes about this country or about our policies. Do any of you have any uh, questions about the United States? Mr. President, I should like to say to you that this contact that I've had the opportunity to have with your country and your people here in this highly developed country have left a profound impression, at least on my spirit. I should also like to express the, the shock that I felt when we realized and we saw clearly the situation of underdevelopment in which we are living in our country. In view of this, I should like to ask you, Mr. President, what would be the reaction of the U.S. government in the event that we were to socialize the means of production in our country as a way to more effectively wage the battle against underdevelopment? Well, I think that uh, the uh, decision of the uh your country as to the means of uh, providing progress is uh, your decision. And uh, if by uh, socialization uh, you mean that uh, ownership of the means of uh, production or of the basic industries, uh, that is a judgment which you must make. What we're opposed to is uh, a denial of uh, civil liberties, a denial of uh, opportunity for uh, people to uh, assemble, to uh, have their press, to make a, a free choice of what kind of government they want. If they choose uh, freely, uh, for example, the uh, Great Britain in 1945 uh, chose a socialist party, which nationalized some of the means of production. Other countries with whom the United States has had friendly relations have made that kind of a choice themselves. We prefer another means of, uh, we prefer the competitive market economy here under the, uh, with, uh, we believe that by free competition, we can satisfy the needs of our people best. Every country must make its own choice. But if you're, whatever choice Brazil makes, a uh, free choice, of course, uh, is uh, their decision. But uh, these phrases about socialization are used uh, rather loosely. What we stand for is a free choice, the means of making an alternate choice if uh, that choice should prove unwise. So that uh, it is our belief that uh, through a system of freedom, uh, uh, we can best achieve uh, the uh, satisfaction of the desires of the people. I noticed that uh, some of you uh, felt that uh, this country, uh, in a story I saw in the paper a couple of days ago, that this country was dominated by the business community and that the government was dominated by business. That will come as a great uh, shock and a source of pleasure to the business community here in the United States. We regard uh, business, labor, the farmers, the general public interest, uh, we regard uh, the public interest as preeminent. And uh, we believe that the competition of our enterprise system is best provided for our people. Now, you may decide that or you may decide on another course of action. We would accept that as long as it represented a free choice. What we're against is tyranny. May I uh, just, uh, I noticed in the paper the other day that uh, in the story about some of you expressing your views about the United States and you said that uh, it seemed to me that uh, many of the points that you were making about this country really are almost uh, 50 years old, that the view that you have of uh, Western Europe and the United States and its economic and political and social development really uh, are views that uh, are pre-World War I, that uh, you ought to take a, a good look at the extraordinary progress that's been made in the common market, the rate of economic growth, what we've been able to do in this country, and also uh, contrast that with the uh, uh, rather uh, obvious failures stretching all the way from the Berlin Wall all the way to China in the fields of agriculture, organization, civil liberties, and all the rest. I think that uh, those of you who are students, particularly those of you who may be uh, somewhat uh, attracted by uh, Marxist uh, dogmas and philosophies, should take a look at this country, the relationship between the government and the citizen, between the various groups in our society, the extraordinary progress of Europe in the last 10 years, and the failures behind the Iron Curtain before making a judgment that what is needed in your country or in any other underdeveloped country is a revolution, a class struggle, a denial of liberty, and all the rest. What you get is a denial of liberty, the class struggle, the uh, rifle squads, and it seems to me you get no commensurate economic progress. Mr. President, I should like to uh, address. 
I should like to uh, um, submit a request to you at this moment. In the course of our travels in the United States, we have had the opportunity to observe this country, uh, especially the fact that the government of your country and its people have difficulties and problems to face. As an example, the bill that, um, the, the, uh, the bill that you submitted to Congress for approval for uh, aid to senior citizens of your country that was rejected by Congress during this session was indeed a bill uh, highly worthy of the democracy that prevails in this country. So that during the course of our trip here, we have had the opportunity to see that whereas before our concept was that the United States was a country that had no problems, we see indeed that the, pro that the United States has many problems to face. <laughs> um, I should like to make a request to you, Mr. President, that uh, namely that uh, when you visit our country in November, uh, I, should, I should hope that you will come into contact with uh, people at all levels, in all walks of life, especially in the northeastern sector of our country, where the people are living in a calamitous, uh, uh, a calamitous situation, and uh, that you uh, come into close contact with the people so that you will be able to uh, gain a first-hand, gain first-hand knowledge of the situation that afflicts our people living there. I will. But he is... We, uh, I, I hope we will go to, uh, if no, it's agreeable with the government, to the Northeast. No, no, Mr. Uh, President, um, um, how, do, how do you reconcile the fact that in spite of all the talk of peace that you say that your country advocates, why, why is it that the, at least apparently the youth in this country is being prepared for war through all types of, of, of aggressive war propaganda, through all the, the uh, mass media, radio, television, and uh, newspapers? For instance, uh, last Sunday uh, on television, we saw two to three hours of programs about military military programs. It, it, it would seem that in this country, instead of um, instead of orienting the uh, conscience of the people toward peace, it seems that you are um, orienting them in a way that uh, would remind that reminds us of the, the Germany of Hitler, the militaristic Germany of Hitler. The uh I think that uh, we've made it very clear that uh, there isn't going to be any winner of the next war. No one who is a rational man can possibly desire to see uh, hostilities break out, particularly between the major powers which are equipped with nuclear weapons. So that your view of the United States in this regard really is inaccurate. We certainly desire a peace. And uh, I'm not aware that uh, of any action which the United States has taken since the end of the second war, which uh, has not been in the direction of, of securing peace. We have not been guilty of aggression against our neighbors. We occupy uh, ner no territories. We, any troops of the United States which may be stationed abroad are there at the request of the country in order to participate in their defense. The United States believes in uh, national sovereignty, national independence, individual security and liberty. And that is the objective of our policy. Now, we are at Geneva taking part in a disarmament conference. We will accept uh, a, uh, and have sought for a number of years a nuclear test ban. We have sought a program of general disarmament with inspection. We've been unable to secure the uh, agreement of the Soviet Union, but we shall keep at it. So whatever the uh, television may have been on uh, Sunday, and I was not observing it, I can tell you this is a very peaceful country, and that anyone who desires war these days uh, uh, is insane. We arm to protect our security, but I can assure you that the United States will not be guilty of aggression. Though, of course, it will meet its commitments to people uh, and to uh, countries. In any case, uh, I want to uh, express our thanks and welcome you here. We have a new cabinet official who's going to be the Secretary of Health, Education, and Welfare, who we have to swear in. Perhaps you could uh, just stay and uh, watch the ceremony if they have a minute. Mr. President, the students wish to express their appreciation for the welcome that you gave them and uh, they've been received in this country. Thank you very much.